All right, what's up everybody? All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is when you watch this video, just make it apply. I hope all of you are in some good positive energy that you're ready to receive this message because it's a lot and that uh, of course you forgive me for my long absence. Um, I've been away for a while, guys. You know, it's been so much stuff happening in my life. You know, um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that we had a, a electrical house fire while all of us was at home. You know, I was getting the kids ready for school. You know, one of the outlets just flamed out and end up taking an entire room. And then we had smoke damaged all throughout the house. So, um, you know, luckily I was able to get the kids out, you know, out of the house. You know, nobody really um, had any serious, um, you know, injuries or anything like that. One of the kids was just taken to the hospital because he was a little bit closer to the fire just to make sure that everything is okay. But all is well. No one had, you know, anything, you know, um, wrong from this situation. And so, you know, thank you, you know, Ola Dumare, all of my Arishas, my spirit guides, my ancestors for watching over us and keeping us safe. My head Arisha Obatala. Um, the kid had Arisha is Chango, and then my other kid is um, Ogun. So thank you, you know, all, all of you for watching over us and keeping us safe and allowing this incident to not overtake us, that we were really able to get out of this with uh, no problem. So definitely happy about that. Um, and even before the fire, you know, this happened, uh, what, October 1st, I believe, even before the fire, just adjusting to, you know, the new life in this pandemic, you know, kids not going to school, paying for daycare or keeping them at home. You know, it's been pretty crazy to keep up with that. You know, it's like, you know, OK, you know, it's a little overwhelming. You know, let me try to just handle one thing at a time. Um, but we had so much stuff just happen back to back to back. But I'm glad that I'm getting back into the flow of things. All right. So I already took two minutes of your time. Let's talk about the message. So the message is today is how spirituality can really transform your life or even religion. So we don't have to stop at spirituality. You know, religion and spirituality can really transform your life. You know, honestly, both of them are two different things, but they can coincide with one another. You know, religion gives you more of a structure. It tells you the do's and don'ts. You know, I love some of the rules that I learned when it came to Christianity, like study to show thyself approved. No matter what you do after, that lesson will always be that 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 um, standard will always last. That scripture will always last. That no matter what you get into, you really do need to study to show thyself approved. You know, uh, faith, with, faith without works is dead. You know, all of these things that I learned from Christianity is, is, is really amazing. And so, you know, now since I'm um, studying Aoife, working with my Orishas, working with my ancestors, allowing my spirit guides to guide me, you know, it's not... I'm not giving up everything that I learned when it came to Christianity. Those lessons are still a blessing. Those lessons are still a guide. Those lessons are still embedded within me that I'm like, hey, you know, remember that vengeance is the Lord. Don't be trying to do nothing to get back at people. Let my Orishas and stuff handle the problem. You know, all of those things that still carries with me. So, you know, I tell everyone when it comes to you on your path, you are being led on your path. And with your path, it's not saying that, okay, now since you're leaving Christianity and you're going to Aoife, you got to completely forget all of this stuff and you got to deny, you know, what you learned on this path. No, it's saying that I, I put you through this first so that you can learn the lesson and you can master the skills and everything. And now since you mastered those skills, you're taking that and you're adding it in your toolkit. And now you're going to the next thing and you're adding all of these things in your toolkit. This is, I tell people, your spiritual journey it's just like solving an equation in high school, how seventh grade, you learned one part, 
Eighth grade, you learned another part. Ninth grade, you learned another part of that equation. And when you got to the 10th grade, you didn't forget what you learned in previous years. You had to remember those things in order to be able to solve the equation at a 10th grade level. And then at an 11th grade level, you had to remember everything from 7th through 10th. So this is a journey that you are constantly like having a big backpack and putting as much stuff as you can in that backpack or a tool belt and you are putting as much stuff as you can in that tool um, in that toolbox or in that belt so you are constantly carrying all of this stuff with you you know don't think that something has to be given up just because you're you're doing something new on your journey like switching from religion to spirituality. And then spirituality to me is just that pure power. Is you tapping into the spiritual realm? Is you understanding how the spiritual realm is working? And you start to have a quicker manifestation time that you are able to manifest the things that you want, that at this point you understand, you know, who you are and you're operating in your power. So that's the difference to me is that religion is teaching you structure. Religion is teaching you the do's and don'ts and is teaching you the, the principles of everything is the is truly the foundation and the building blocks. But spirituality is the thing that's going to make you touch the sky. Next thing you know, you and uh, you, you face to face with Ola Dumare. <laughs> so that's what your spirituality is. It's that pure power that you're able to manifest. So. So now, guys, I'm just showing you because a lot of people have been complimenting me about my body. Um, people have just been saying like, man, you know. You're losing weight, you know, you're looking good. And I'm like, no, I'm not losing weight. You know, I'm still the same size. I'm still six feet, you know, 265 pounds. And people are like, oh, no, you know, trust me, you have lost weight. I got on the scale. I'm still weighing the same. And it was at a time that I was actually weighing more than 265. And I'm like, no. But then as I start to look in the mirror, though, I was like, you know, but I do see it. I do see, you know, it's a more defined cut. You know, I do see that my stomach is, you know, is going down and it's really, it's really starting to be flat, extremely flat, you know, because of course, when your stomach is down and stuff, it makes your chest pop out more. It makes your chest to, um, to appear even bigger than what it is. And the same with your arms, you know, when you get this midsection together, it makes your chest and your arms and everything look bigger. And so I'm like, okay, I can see what people are talking about now. And so what I want to tell you guys is that spirituality will really change your life. It will really transform your life in every level. Remember, we are a body, we are a soul, and we are a spirit. You know, of course, the body is the flesh. It's what you can see. It's everything in the physical realm that you can see, that you can touch, that you can smell, that you can hug. You know, that's everything in the physical realm. And then you have your soul, which to me, your soul is really talking about the energy that you possess. It's that energetic level. It's the frequency that, you, that you're on. It's the, um, it's the vibrations and everything that you're vibrating at. You know, that's your soul level. And then you have the spirit level, which is spirit, that it is a part of of the creator, whatever it is you believe in, it is a part of the universe. It is a part of just this magical creature or whatever that is inside of you, that lives inside of you. And it, it, it gets you in touch with, you know, the most high. It gets you in touch with, you know, this universe and everything in the spiritual realm that we cannot see. And so when we are practicing religion and spirituality, it is really honing in on the spirit sector. And so one of the things with, that I do spiritually is I work with the Orishas. So, you know, this is me. You know, I, I just did a, um, a feast day for Shango. Um, and then, of course, my head Orisha, Obatala. I deal with the Orishas. And so, you know, once you really start dealing with the Orishas and you start giving offerings and stuff like that, you're going to notice how your life is just going to start changing, you know, and transforming in so many different ways. Like, um, you know, one of the things about Obatala, Obatala is the Orisha of purity. And especially with Obatala being my head Orisha, you carry the characteristics of Obatala. You know, 
children of Obatala carry majority of his characteristics of being pure. You know, justice is one of his things. So being fair in everything that you do, being fair to other people, you know, acknowledging contracts and everything else, you know, um, Obatala is light. You know, so you're, you're carrying around that light that you are the light in this world. And as you really start to learn more about him and you connect more with him, you are you're starting to be in the image of him. And so one of the things is like with purity is with purity. Once I start learning more about Abatala, I automatically start doing semen retention. And so now is no sex, no jacking off and the health benefits and the spiritual benefits that comes with that is just amazing. And so now just me connecting with my Arisha and learning that aspect and me following along in his characteristics to connect with him more is blessing me on a physical level. Because now on a physical level, whenever you're doing semen retention, you are able to focus more. You know, not only are you able to focus more, but you are able to build bigger muscles. Like guys, the, when you stop just unnecessarily jacking off and having sex and you keep it in, you are able to build bigger muscles because now you're keeping your testosterone levels high. You know, majority of us, our testosterone levels is so low because we're just like, if we're not having sex, we are jacking off eight times a day. And now, you know, you're not doing anything to retain, you know, your power, you know, and that's another thing. That's another thing is when you do semen retention, you will realize your power. You will feel your power. You will start feeling vibrations in a room. You will start feeling the frequencies. You will start feeling the spirit and the emotions and stuff on people that you will think that you're an empath. You know, it's so it's benefits that comes with um, semen retention. And it all came because, you know, me studying my Arisha and my Arisha is purity. And so any no matter what Arisha is your head, Arisha, I feel that you need to you need to hone those characteristics because those are the things that's going to bless your path. Um, another thing about the Orishas is that, you know, um, feast days. So, of course, this is Shango feast day. One of the meals that he liked is I made a, um, a hot pepper um, chicken, okra, black eyed peas, cornbreads. And then here is just nuts. It's, um, it's an apple and a strawberry. So it's fruit because these are all the things that he like. And then, of course, I had to give some to Yemaya because Yemaya is his mother and he's a mama's boy. So over here is strawberries and blueberries. Of course, I had to give something to Oshun because, I, number one, I love Oshun. And Oshun and um, Shango is connected as well because, you know, they had their little, you know, uh, relationship, love affair and everything else. So um, Oshun like um, lemons and almonds. So that's what's on hers. And then of course he was married to Oya. <laughs> so Oya got the grapes over here. And then, um, and then Elegua, of course, Elegua should have been really been the first person I introduced because Elegua is always on here because you can't do anything without Elegua. Elegua is literally every time I do a feast day or offering to any other Arisha trying to talk to another Arisha, you have to honor and acknowledge Elegua. You without Elegua, you won't be talking to nobody. <laughs> without Elegua, nobody is coming out here. So Elegua, you know, he has his apples and then his strong alcohol. So and I only show you that for for this for this reason. The more you start giving to your Arishas, it will automatically change your diet. You like, okay, wait a minute. You know, like with, with me, I naturally, it's like I got so much fruit in the house because I'm always giving fruits and everything to my Arishas. It's like, okay, instead of eating this bag of chips, let me eat some apples. You know, let me eat these apples down. Let me eat these grapes down. And so now even when I find myself snacking, like I'm snacking on grapes and cheese, you know, um, just grapes and then a little cube cheese. Or I'm snacking on, you know, apples and peanut butter. And so it's automatically transforming my diet now that once again, this is another physical benefit 
Because now, you know, um, of course, the more healthier foods you eat, you start to shed fat. All of that fat is now leaving your body. And then the more you're lifting weights on top of this, now you're building more muscles. So you're more lean. And so it's another benefit where once again, spirituality is transforming your life. And then even with the healthy foods part, it even bless you on a spiritual realm because now you're controlling your breathing more. Now, now your respiratory system is on point and breathing is everything when it comes to meditation, when it comes to really trying to tap into the spiritual realm. And so you're able to do more when you're healthier. You're able to do more of the things that they are telling you to do. If they are telling you to go down the street and bless so-and-so, you're not saying, oh, I can't go down there because I'm tired. You know, um, I, I can't walk up those steps. You know what I'm saying? And so you really need to, the more you tap in, the more of a blessing this is going to be. This is already at 15 minutes. Let me try to hurry it up. Another thing that I've been getting a lot of compliments on is my skin. Everybody is just like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, not only is your body on point now that you're you're shedding all of these pounds and everything, but they like, you know, your, your, your face is a whole lot clearer. You know, everybody is talking about my face. Everybody, you know, have told me that like, you know, you have always had like this natural scent that your body always gave out a natural scent. And they were saying that now this natural scent is even louder now, like you can smell smell the natural scent that is coming from your body. And so with that, you know, it's back connected. You know, um, Obatala is the Orisha that loves frankincense and myrrh, you know, and um, sandalwood and shea butter. And so honestly, I've switched all of my chemical body wash and stuff like that. And it's all natural. Everything that I it my um my body wash is natural. It is um shea butter, frankincense, and myrrh. My face wash is natural. It's um shea butter, frankincense, and myrrh. The lotions that I use after is natural. It's nothing but shea butter. And um when I want to use lotion, I use a lotion that's shea butter, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, my body spray is a body spray mixture of frankincense and myrrh. My cologne that I use now is sandalwood. It's nothing but sandalwood. Um, and so, you know, it, it, man, just it's your life will truly transform when you start just really being attached to your religion or your spiritual practice. And it's not the overwhelming one. It's not that, you know, you got in and as soon as you get in, somebody is telling you, oh, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You know, none of this stuff you can do. You know, oh, you, you know, you, you got to do this. You got to eat right. You got to do this. You got to do that. No, mine was not the overwhelming side. And shame on any brother that is um, giving um, anyone such an overwhelming burden when they first get in, because that is a high level of discouragement. And that's when people look the other way. They say, you know what? I don't want to learn about the Orishas, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whatever it is you're selling. I'm going the other way because this is too overwhelming and it's too much for me. None of us should be doing that. When we see a new brother or sister coming into the fold, we need to be gentle. We need to be gentle with them just like the Orishas was gentle with us. You know, we need to be loving to them just like the Orishas was loving to us. Don't rush them into this. Allow them, you know, I don't care if you see that they're fucking everybody, you know, every single day. Focus on one thing, you know, teaching them to learn about Ilegua, teaching them how to pray to Ilegua, just one thing that they are not overwhelmed. And once they master that one thing, that's when you can start giving them other one things to do. But don't overwhelm them of you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to read this. You need to do this and all of this other stuff. And then it gets to the point that they run because they're overwhelmed. Don't bring your brother that don't don't bring your brother that level of a burden. You know, be patient and loving with them, just like the Orishas were to you. All right. So let's that's, that's going to be the that's one thing that if you don't take anything else from this video, take that. You know, that's the one thing that I want you to take. But I just wanted to show you guys that how 
you literally can transform your life by attaching to your spiritual practice or your religion. You know, I love, you know, the muscle I'm getting and everything just from, you know, the semen retention, eating more healthier foods, you know, switching to a more natural body wash. You know, my skin feels so much better. My skin looks a whole lot better. It's healthier. You know, I'm able to be more focused. I'm more connected spiritually. All of these things because I'm attaching to my practice. I'm attaching to my spiritual practice. You guys, if you want to see change, if you want to see a huge transformation in your life, like don't don't actually get into your spiritual practice. Actually get into your religion. Don't keep being on the outside of it. Actually get involved and do things. Get connected. Constantly read. Every morning I get up at 3.30 in the morning and I start my day with prayer and meditation before going to the gym. Those are the things that we need to be doing and you will start seeing a huge change in your life. You will start seeing a huge change. But that change is not going to come until we honestly start honoring and acknowledging the Orishas. Because when we honor and acknowledge our ancestors, our spirit guides, the Orishas, the ones that is constantly blessing us and protecting us and watching over us and keeping us safe, the more we connect with them, the more we will see a huge change in our lives. We'll see more victories. We'll see more love and everything else come into our lives. You know, the one thing that I would tell anyone, especially if you're following the path of Aoife, learn who your head Orisha is, learn his characteristics and everything of who he is, and you need to learn how to be more like him or more like her. And the more you tap into their energy, the more that you get their energy, you know, you will see a big change in your life. All it takes is for you to receive their ashe. The moment that Ashe start coming in, you are going to see a huge change. Allow it. Spirituality have a huge part in transforming your life. Allow it to transform you. I'm telling you guys, it's doing it for me. I'm loving the smaller waist. <laughs> I'm loving the bigger muscles. And all of this is stuff that I'm doing because I'm, atta I'm, I'm, I'm attaching to my Arishas, I'm, 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 my ancestors. I'm allowing them. I'm allowing them to guide me. I I'm allowing them to guide me. I'm allowing them to lead me on this path of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Getting back to what I promised Ola Dumare that I was going to do on this earth. Getting back to that soul contract of saying, hey, you know, what is it that I said before I came to this earth, when I was present with you, Olo Dumare, what did I say that I was going to do? That's what this path is all about. It's all about remembering what it is that you agreed to, that you said that you were going to do on this earth. That before we came here, we picked who our, our head Arisha was. We picked our assignment. We picked all of this stuff that we were going to do on this earth. And now it's just time for us to awake and remember. And trust me, you will get there the more that you get back to your Orisha, that you get back to your ancestors. They will never lead you in the wrong direction. Allow them to guide you and allow them to transform your life for the better. All right, guys, if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Instagram. It's Rashad King 2017. I really do hope that, hey, that you guys stay connected and stay blessed.